Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about black holes. So the question is, are black holes really black? Is this what a black hole would look like if it was in my hand? So in order to answer the question, is a black hole black or invisible? First we need to define what black means and then what invisible means. And then we need to learn what a black hole actually is. And finally, to answer the question once and for all, I'll show you an actual real simulation of what a black hole would look like if it was right next to the Earth. And you'll be able to see what it would actually look like and if it is actually black or not. So I have painted on my hand here the blackest paint available on the market today called Black 2.0. So a few videos ago, I did a video with this black 2.0 versus my brightest flashlight, a 32,000 lumen flashlight. And I referenced this black 2.0 and said, it looks just like a black hole. And a lot of people in the comments section, they were saying, black holes aren't black, they're invisible. So I decided I needed to make a video on black holes to clear some things up. So first let's talk about those two terms. What does black really mean and what does invisible really mean? So the reason this appears black on my hand is because all visible light is coming in and getting absorbed by the black paint and almost no visible light is returning back to your eyes. And so when the photoreceptors in our eye see a spot that has no light coming from it, it just is an absence of a signal and so it appears black to us. So black is the absence of color or the absence of any light. But what does invisible mean? Well, invisible doesn't really mean in the absence of light. It just means that you don't notice that something is there. So for example, carol syrup and glass have about the same refractive index. And so light travels through it at about the same speed. And so that means that they bend light about the same, which means that any light coming through it from the background gets bent about the same way. And so that means when you stick glass in carol syrup, it becomes invisible. So there's really a glass beaker in here that you can barely see. Right here. <laughs> so this glass was invisible simply because it lit the background glass through at the same rate as the liquid that it was in. And also it bent the light the same way that the liquid bent the light so you couldn't tell it was there. So for something to be invisible, it doesn't mean that there's no light getting to your eyes. In fact, there's a lot of light getting to your eyes and it's all coming from the background. So for something to be invisible, it just means that you don't know it's there because you can't differentiate it from the background. For example, here's a ping pong ball painted with black 2.0 right in front of my hand with black 2.0 on it. So you could say in this case, the ping pong ball was invisible. Okay, so now that we've defined what black is and what invisible is, let's talk about what a black hole is. So a black hole is made of matter just like anything else that you can touch and feel in the universe. But a black hole is a little bit different because it's been compressed very tightly. So with any large object in space like the Earth, there's two main forces that are competing against each other. The first force is gravity. Gravity is always pulling and compressing everything together. It's the only force that's always attractive. So gravity is always pulling everything together, but the electromagnetic force on the electrons around the molecules and atoms are always repelling each other. So it kind of comes into a balance. Gravity pulls everything together, and then the electromagnetic force pushes everything apart, and it stays like that. But because the more mass you have, the more gravity you have from every particle pulling each other together, it means that you can reach a critical point. And that critical point means that there's a point when you get enough mass packed together that the gravity can overcome the electromagnetic repulsion of the atoms and molecules. And so if you pack enough mass together, then gravity will just keep pulling on it and pulling on it and pulling on it until the electrons get closer and closer together. But there's a problem because in physics, there's a rule that states that two electrons can't be in the same state in the same location at the same time. And so if you try to pack electrons together, they can't do it. And so they exert a pressure called degeneracy pressure. And that's what a white dwarf is. And so a white dwarf is when the gravity has balanced with the degeneracy pressure of the electrons in a star, and so it stops collapsing. But then if you pack even more mass into it, then the gravity keeps pulling it closer and closer together so that eventually the electrons come so close to the protons in the atoms that they interact with the protons. 
And when an electron and a proton get close enough together, it can form a neutron. And so if you get enough mass together, it comes so close together due to that strong force of gravity that now all the atoms with their protons, neutrons, and electrons just become this sea of neutrons. And this is called a neutron star, and it's extremely dense, but it's not a black hole yet. And a neutron star is supported about the same way that a white dwarf is because there's a rule in physics that also says that two neutrons can't be in the same state at the same time in the same location. And so that exerts an outward pressure that keeps the neutron star from collapsing on itself. But then if you pack even more mass onto it, not even the neutron degeneracy pressure can keep the star from imploding on itself and it becomes a black hole. So basically any star after it explodes into a supernova, if the core left over is 2.5 times larger than the mass of our sun, it will have enough mass to collapse into a black hole. And so a black hole is basically a singularity, one single point where all mass, all matter in the entire star has collapsed into one single point because there's nothing that can hold it back after it collapses tighter and tighter together because gravity gets stronger and stronger the closer the particles are together. And so once mass has collapsed into a black hole, there's absolutely nothing that can escape from the inside of the black hole to the outside world, not even light. So not only can its own light not escape from the black hole, but any light that's coming from around the black hole will also fall into the black hole and be absorbed into it. So this answers one of our main questions, are black holes black? Well, by our definition, does a black hole absorb all visible light? Well, yes, it does. Not only does it absorb all visible light, but it gives off no light whatsoever. No visible light, no infrared light, nothing. So a black hole is literally the blackest black possible in the universe. So there's a certain radius around a black hole called the event horizon. And this is the radius around the black hole in which the, if something passes, it cannot return back from the black hole. And so basically there's this sphere around the black hole called the event horizon from which no light can escape and all light going into it is absorbed. So even though the mass of a black hole is contained in a singularity, meaning an infinitesimally small point, the event horizon has a definite diameter and that's the part that appears black. In fact, here's what a black hole would look like if the earth were right behind it in space. So you can see that not only is the black hole definitely black, but something weird is going on around the edges. You can see that the black hole is kind of deforming the light coming from the Earth. And that's happening because gravity not only attracts mass, but it attracts light also. And because the gravity of a black hole is so strong, light actually bends around it. And so that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing the light from the Earth bending around the black hole. It's not actually only black holes that bend light either all mass bends light. In fact, one of the first ways they were able to test Einstein's theory of relativity is watching how the sun bent the light from a distant star. Well, a black hole is definitely black, and a black hole can be invisible depending on what's behind it. If an Earth is behind the black hole, then obviously you can see the black hole. But if there's nothing behind the black hole to see the black, then all you see is black on a black background, and then the black hole is invisible. So I'm going to say a black hole is definitely black and sometimes it's invisible depending on what's behind it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And you can leave me any comments or questions or suggestions in the comment section. I'll try to get to them and I'll see you next time.